Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. In this image, I've used continuous studio lights as the subject and added a little smoke to give the picture a bit more impact. It will eventually be used to replace my current YouTube banner picture, so it needs to conform to a specific aspect ratio. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK. So, this is the lights that I'm going to be using, uh, and they're all uh, ARRI LED lights, um, so they have quite a lot of control over just what you can do with them. If I just turn the uh, intensity up on this one, for instance, this is currently set uh, to a daylight colour temperature, uh, and it's in a colour temperature mode, so I can change the colour temperature of the light at will. So if I just cool that down a bit, uh, 3200 Kelvin, that's a sort of tungsten side of things, and then if I just come up a bit, I can come back up to daylight, 5600 Kelvin. But they all have another mode as well, and the other mode allows me to pick a particular colour. It's like having an infinite variety of different gels. Uh, so if I just change the mode on this light, so, and now what I can do is uh, I can increase the intensity and then pick whatever colour I want. So let's just pick a, a red. OK, so having set this one, uh, I can now set the other lights up. There we go, so that's set up the lights. So the next thing to do would be to just have a little look at what camera I'm using. And as usual, I'm using this full-frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it. Uh, the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so I'll just pop the camera on this tripod, and we'll line up the shot. So we'll just focus that up a bit, and this time I think I will leave it at the 24 mil end like that. OK, so with that now done, the next thing to do would be to turn the camera on and we'll just have a look at the settings on the camera. So the software has recognised the camera and at the moment it's set to 1 250th of a second for the shutter speed, fully manual, um, 100 ISO and an aperture of f8. So just with those settings, I'll grab an image and just see what we get. OK, so we're not getting a great deal of exposure there um, with those settings. So what I'm going to do is just take the shutter speed and reduce it quite a lot. Now, obviously, there's nothing moving in this image, so it doesn't really matter what speed I pick. Um, so if I go for something like um, one second, let's try that. I'll just grab an image and then we'll be able to assess the exposure. OK, so at one second, uh, we can see that um, we're getting quite a lot of illumination from the house lights. Uh, and the colours in these two lights seem to be a little um, blown out. Uh, so what I might do is just reduce that to half a second and we'll just grab that again. There, that's saturated these up a bit more. We're still getting quite a lot of interference from the house lights, so I would think that the next step would be just to turn them out. OK, so with the lights out, I'll grab another image and just see what we get. OK. So in this image, you can see that it's actually coming along quite nicely. We've got a reasonable amount of saturation on these lights, but the rest of the light aren't very visible. So that's the thing to address next. So what I'm going to do first is just recycle some of the light uh, from this light over here and just bounce it into this one just to make it a bit more visible. 
So I'm just using this um, four foot by four foot uh, flag. Let me just pop that up in the air. About there somewhere. There we are. So that should be recycling some of that light uh, onto this one. So we'll just grab an image and see what difference that makes. OK, so that's increased the illumination on here. We now need to just address this one a bit. So what I'm going to do is just bring uh, another LED light in, which I'm just going to place about here somewhere, relatively close. We'll just plug that in, and we'll turn that on. There we are. So I'll need to probably turn this down um, quite a lot. So we'll just turn it down a little bit to start with. And we'll just see what that's like. Yeah, I think that's a little bright. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just adjust the intensity until the image is right. There we are, we'll try that. Yes, that's much better. OK, so now with all that set, the next thing to do is to add a little smoke. And for that, I'm going to use uh, this smoke machine. Uh, so I'll need to plug that in and let it warm up. OK, now I think the smoke machine has warmed up, so we'll give it a bit of a blast and see what we get. OK. So let the smoke do its thing for a bit. And we'll just take a picture. So a little confused, as it is at the moment bit too much smoke, we'll just let it dissipate slightly. So just to help it dissipate out, I'm just going to use a piece of card and just waft that just up into the beam a bit like that. There we are. OK. So just while I'm waiting for that smoke to dissipate, I might just move this light slightly. I think I'm going to just take it back a little and also just raise it up in the air. Just wind that up. Let's try that. I think it'll just change where the highlight is um, on uh, on this light just here. So again, just wait for the smoke. It's starting to dissipate a little. Yes, I think this is looking quite a lot better now that I've adjusted that light. There we are, we're starting to get there now. It's uh, dissipating off quite nicely. And it's just a case of being patient and waiting for the smoke to get into the correct place to give you the sort of image that you want. In fact, the other thing that I might do is just take the colour temperature down on this light a little, which I think might make it look a little more interesting. So I'll take that down to a more tungsten-y sort of light, like that. There we are, that's starting to get there, I think. It's 
So I think we've got uh, quite a nice uh, set of images there to pick from. So what I think I'll do now is just go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop and I've selected three variants to have a look at just to pick the best from the bunch. This is uh, one of the earlier ones uh, and we've got quite a nice uh, smoke effect going on here. Uh, then we have this one, uh, which is at the moment probably the one that I will be uh, going forwards with. I quite like that. It looks quite dynamic. And this one as a variation. So I think what I'll do is we'll just get rid of that one and that one and I'll take this one uh, a bit further forwards. OK, so the first thing that I want to do here uh, is just adjust the perspective a bit. If you have a look at these lighting stands, you can see that they're both leaning in. Uh, and that is because they're at the edge of the frame and I was using a 24mm lens relatively close to the subject. So we've got a bit of uh, barrel distortion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take that out by using uh, a transform and I'm going to use the perspective warp transform. So what we can do with this uh, is basically um, just put a marker grid over the area that we're interested in like that and basically I'm just going to line up the edges of this grid with the lighting stands. Just like that. You don't have to be very accurate, it's just meant as a bit of a guide really. Uh, so with that in place, just click on the warp icon at the top here and now I can move these pins around and it'll move the perspective of the whole picture. So as I move that out, straighten that one up and then I can move this one out and straighten that one up. There's much more you can do with this but uh, this just gives you a bit of an idea. OK, so with those bits done I do click on OK. There, right, so the next thing I need to do is just make sure that the image will conform to the requirements of a YouTube banner. So the first thing that I need to do is just select a crop. Now the YouTube requirement for a, a banner, if it's going to be used for a uh, TV image, would be 16 by 9. So that will be my starting point. So I'll just put 16 by 9 in, like that. And I'm actually going to make this um, a bit bigger bit out to the edges like this. Now the reason I'm doing that, so when the banner is displayed on a PC for instance, um, it won't be in 16 by 9. So this image has to make sense at all those various different subsamples. OK, so I'm just going to use that as a starting point I think. Just click on OK. Right, now I'm just going to add another layer so, so I can just get rid of all the white space around the edges. So on this new layer, I'm literally just going to paint it black. So just using uh, black as a foreground colour and a fairly large brush. Go in there and paint all the edges out, like so. And there we have it. So I've ended up with quite a striking image, uh, just with a few lights and a few different colours and a little bit of smoke. So it shouldn't be too long before you see that as my banner on my YouTube channel. OK, well I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.